scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The spiritual pathway that transforms men from being carnal to being spiritual indeed. Hallelujah. And I truly am convinced that part of the reason why many believers are not strong in the spirit and cannot do much for the kingdom is because they have not been taught the spiritual pathway that transits men from being carnal to being spiritual indeed. Now, it's very sad that we don't agree over many things in the body of Christ. And we just thank God for his grace and his faithfulness. I think that one of the things that we all agree over in the body of Christ is the condition of being born again. If you confess Jesus Christ, you confess, you believe that God raised him from the dead, you are saved. Every sect, every denomination believes that and there is no argument about that. The moment that you satisfy that condition, you are accepted across every denomination. But after that, we almost don't agree on anything again. And so there has been confusion through the years as to the exact path of spiritual progress. Hallelujah. And tonight, the teaching is an attempt to bring us into that understanding. I truly believe that this holds the key to our deeper and our richer work with God. I read a book by a man who was acclaimed to be the 21st century prophet, a man called A.W. Tozer, The Pursuit of God. Powerful book. These were men whose dimensions of spiritual understanding was amazing. I have read many books. I have been built by so many people in the body of Christ. But there are certain people that their teachings and their spiritual paradigm has left a mark upon my life that will never be erased. Their understanding about God is so accurate. When you study their writings, you know that these people encountered God. Hallelujah. There are so many books in the body of Christ attempting to answer different questions about the pursuit of God. And the challenge is that, you see, when hunger meets error, it becomes a very unfortunate thing in the spirit. There are many believers who are hungry. We come to God, we come to church, and we say, I am thirsty. Lord, reveal more. You see, when you are hungry, you are like a baby whose mouth is open. Anything that can fill you, you will take it and swallow it sincerely. Hallelujah. And many of us, that's the journey that begun the error that we have come into. We, have, we delved into it sincerely. When we got born again, there were probably no good Christian groups and fellowships around us to build us accurately. And so everything that looked like light, we ran to it and we poured our lives to receive it. And that little 
that we had is what we are holding on to today. But the unfortunate part is that some of what we received is not the accurate truth. So I sincerely pray from the depths of my heart that God will open our eyes so that our spiritual progress will be accurate and that at the end of our journey we will not have regrets as to why we did not attain the full stature of being spiritual men. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And so we have learned a lot of things. And um, I have seen that there is a cancer that is eating believers up. And that cancer in one word is called the flesh. It's a cancer that has been responsible for the downfall of many mighty men. Please open your heart tonight because the Lord is going to talk to you very seriously. Hallelujah. Everyone say the flesh. We're going to examine what is this spiritual cancer that is able to impede people and stop them from becoming spiritual. Grant us grace in the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. Search me true and true till my heart becomes a home for you. If you know the song, just sing it one more time. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you. First Corinthians 2 from verse 14. Verse 14. In fact, let's start from verse 13. First Corinthians 2, let's start from verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words of man's wisdom, that man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. 14. Everyone read. One to read. Stop. So the Bible tells us there is a man called what? The natural man. But the natural man cannot... Receive what? The things of the Spirit. Why? For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Because spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Are you following me now? So, this is the first kind of man the Bible seeks to explain to us. He is called the natural man. And the Bible gives us certain traits it doesn't leave us in confusion to guess who that man is. It says the natural man is one who has not yet sustained the capacity to understand spiritual things. They are foolishness unto him. He cannot know them because he has not been quickened to discern spiritual things. In one word, the natural man is one who has not met Jesus Christ. The natural man is what we call the unbeliever. I don't want to use that word because there are Christians that are still unbelievers. Hallelujah. So the natural man is one who has not met 
the Lord Jesus Christ. He has not come to the cross. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the way. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight And now I am happy all the day So the natural man Is one who has not truly had the encounter Of regeneration The word regeneration comes from the word regene To record you again Regene. It's a new encoding. A changing of your spiritual configuration. Hallelujah. That's the first kind of man. And the Bible says for those kinds of people, there is nothing spiritual that ever makes sense to them. Hallelujah. They consider the faith work foolishness. They consider every spiritual activity foolishness. Some of us were like that before Christ found us. Alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. The commonwealth of Zion. Hallelujah. Everything that was of God was, an, was a thing of mockery. We laughed at spiritual things. This man has an eternal destiny. The name of the place is hellfire. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even if this man has been in church all his life, even if his father is a pastor, even if they baptized him in water, for as long as he has not met Jesus Christ, he is going to hell if he dies. Is there any confusion about that? So that we can move forward. Any confusion? The natural man has an eternal destiny. He's going first to hell and will later be relocated to the lake of fire. Hallelujah. That means if you are here and you have not met Jesus Christ, I wish it were a lie, but it's true. You are going to hell. If you don't repent, there is no other way to say it. I'm, I'm very sorry. I would have said you will go to a place that is not nice. It would have been a nice way. But let me tell you the truth. And take me seriously. The Bible says this. I am the way. I am the truth. Can we get back to the basics of Christianity? I am the life. Not your pastor. Not your prophet. Not anointing oil. Are you getting what I'm saying? Placing an anointing oil on you does not make you a Christian. Soaking you in water in baptism does not make you a Christian. I, 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 is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Because we need to redefine the condition for true salvation. A prophet of God speaking a word over you. To say your sins are forgiven does not take you to heaven. Hello? I want all of us to get to heaven. So I want us to probe so that if you belong to this category and your conviction about your being saved is because of some of these things I'm saying. Let's clean up the air so that you will know. There is what we call, they used to teach us in Sunday school called assurance of salvation. Did they teach you? Not salvation. Assurance of salvation. That you can know that if the trumpet sounds today, by the way, there is a real trumpet and it will sound. 
let's be careful as we progress spiritually and we seek to edit some of these things out i hear men of god who speak and say there's nothing like the book of life you know that statement write my name in the book of life yeah forget it there's nothing like that huh. we will know one day but i can tell you there is a book of life the bible says books were opened and another book a master book was opened and the name of that book it didn't leave us to any theological guessing he said the name of that book is the book of life and whosoever's name pastor apostle koinonia member prayer band member revivalist whosoever's name was not found in that book the bible tells you that you are cast into the lake of fire it's as simple as that what's that man's song is your name in the book of life serious question is your name sing it is my name see let me tell you you know there are many believers who think that your confidence is equal to salvation i won't go to hell i'm going to heaven it doesn't it doesn't matter if you are not saved brothers and sisters hear me there is a name for you the bible calls you what the natural man this is not my message i'm just digressing to press it in so that you will know and you will care brothers and sisters i know that we have been taught not to scare people with the revelation of judgment that there is judgment they don't scare people so that their coming to christ will not be out of fear but the only issue is that it is true brothers and sisters listen to me heaven and earth will pass away but not one word not one word will fail i really want us to truly truly before we even progress examine our salvation the bible says to examine ourselves so that you are sure that if jesus comes today he will make heaven if you know right now that if the trumpet sounds you are going to heaven stand up if you are not sure no problem i'm serious we are not playing games in this place please you know that we are very serious if you are sure that if the trumpet sounds right now right now as we speak you are going you know we can fake it hallelujah that if the trumpet sounds now right now together we are going to be with jesus christ in the air that is one of the greatest assurance you are sure you are going to graduate but that is inferior to your eternal destiny you are sure you are going to get married you are sure you are going to be healed you are sure you are going to be delivered but brothers and you are even sure you will be successful but can i be sincere with you if you are not sure of your salvation it's time to deal with it and i'm going to talk to you i will tell you what the condition to make heaven is please and please i owe you that responsibility under god thank you for giving to the lord keep standing I am alive that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so in the course of ministering. I have had the privilege to stand before people a few minutes before they die. I have had the privilege to comfort families that have been bereaved. 
some families of members here, some families around that I'm connected to. Hallelujah. I've had the opportunity to hold the phone and hear families cry as their loved ones pass on. I've had the opportunity to look at people for the last time. I've had advanced knowledge where God told me this person is not going to make it. He's going to die. The Bible says if our hope is only in this life, we are of all men most miserable. If you've never thought about this thing this year, I want you to think about it for one minute. Jesus Christ is truly coming back. Please, in case you have been told that it will not happen, let me guarantee you there is an event that is going to happen in this earth. And every prophecy, every single prophecy that needs to, be, to come to pass for the coming of Jesus Christ has been fulfilled. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please take it seriously. Every prophecy. There are people who have had visions of the coming of Christ. There are people who have had visions. I'm just reminding you that there is more to this life. This physical life that you see. And as you walk up and down your daily activity, if you are not sure that if Jesus Christ comes, we will be caught up. Let me tell you how it will happen. Please sit down. Everybody open your Bible. First Thessalonians, please. Paul had a revelation of what is going to happen and I'm going to show you. First Thessalonians 4. We are talking about the natural man. As far as I'm concerned, this is the most important thing. The natural man should know. First Thessalonians 4. From verse 13. 4 verse 13. Please let's hurry up so that we can beat time. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for salvation. Everyone look up. It's projected. Paul is talking to the church in Thessalonica. He said, but I would not have you to be ignorant. That means part of the revelations of the kingdom Paul wants us to have is the knowledge about how the coming of Christ is going to be. Brethren, so he's speaking to believers, concerning them which are asleep, that's those who have died, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so also, which sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. So Paul is not speaking his opinion. He's speaking by the word of the Lord. That which we are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. That means the day that Jesus Christ is going to come, there will still be people who will be alive in the earth. Are you getting me? Not everyone is going to have died as in gone to the grave. So he's giving us, Paul is painting a picture on how the rapture will be. Verse, verse 16. For the Lord himself, for who? The owner of the earth, the Lord himself, shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel. Now, which of the archangels we are not told exactly. But the Bible tells us Paul was speaking that on that day Jesus himself will descend from the heaven of heavens. And will come upon this very physical earth. And it says there will be a shout. The voice of an archangel. And with the trump of God. That means a trumpet is going to sound. A shofar 
will blow. And the first thing that will happen in that great ceremony is that the dead in everybody say dead in one more time. So it's not only those who are alive in Christ. A man can also be dead in that he served God with his whole life. And he believed and accepted the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I bring you a message of hope. For those of you who have lost loved ones. Brothers and sisters. If they gave their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a name for them. The Bible says they are dead but in Christ. That means a day will come. There will be a glorious reunion. Hallelujah. So the dead in Christ will be the first to rise. 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall do what? We shall be caught up with them in the clouds. Let me explain to you what will happen. All of this that you see will happen in split seconds. Hallelujah. Split seconds of earth's time. It will be faster than the speed of light. There will be that sound. There's no time I would have shown you that unbelievers are not going to hear that sound. Because he, Jesus gave us a revelation. He said, my sheep hear my voice. That means if you didn't hear it, it was not for you. It's as simple as that. Is that in your Bible? <laughs> the Bible says two people will be lying down. Two roommates in Ribadu will be lying down. And one will be taken and leave the stubborn roommate who is not paying attention to the things of God and thinks I don't care. You get up and say, uh -uh, where did my roommate go to? We have checked out of this earth. A day is coming. The greatest catastrophe that has happened to the earth is not all of the tsunami and the disappearance. Imagine how many pilots are going to go. You think they will stay? Once you hear that sound, you are leaving. The sound does something to your spirit, man. At once, all the graves... That was the revelation that was adumbrated in Ezekiel 37. People who have been maimed, Jews that were killed by Adolf Hitler, bones that have been scattered, Matthias that were beheaded at once. That sound, that sound will do a quickening. The same way Christ was raised from the dead, the Holy Ghost will demonstrate his sovereignty at its best to resurrect every man who is dead in Christ within a split second. And they will rise up with glorified bodies. Watch this. And that time, some of us who are alive, I pray that it happens during koinonia. While we are seated, maybe we are worshipping. All of a sudden, I will leave my Bible for you my phone. Hallelujah. We'll leave the drums, keyboard. There will still be a few people seated. And they'll wonder what is happening. Those who laugh at us right now. And laugh at our fanatism for the kingdom. And think that life is all about money. And cars. And houses. Huh? and marriage and will not give priority to spiritual things. I am not telling you a fairy tale. We are closer to the coming of Christ right now than before Koinonia started. And it's a very good news. If it's a bad news for you, you are the natural man. It is not supposed to be a bad news. When people die, we write transition it's a transition. So we who are alive, 
all of a sudden, this body that is limited, suddenly, immortality is perfected upon this body. We will no longer carry this material. The clothes that we will wear will no longer be removed. There will be robes. They are called garments of praise. They are garments in the spirit. And we will join the king of kings. His feet is not going to touch the earth. He will stand in, He will come with his own cloud. His own realm. Mm. And all of a sudden you will see your grandfather. You will see all the missionaries that were wounded in Nigeria. The ones who were killed in Calabar. The ones that were killed in different crises. We see all kinds of things. And together we will arise. And for the first time you will look at the earth from heaven's perspective and truly see that it is shadow. Every time we're on the air, I have the privilege to look down and you see houses like, you know how children make toys. Whereas somebody will say, I must build this thing. If not, I won't trust you. From heaven's perspective, people steal so that they can build that little object. And you see people moving like ants. That is from, from a view in the sky. Imagine how God looks at everyone. And he says, if I don't build this house, oh Lord, you wait. And he's saying, are you not wise? Have you not heard that there are mansions in heaven? It was not a prophetic statement. There are real mansions. There are people who have gone there. There are mansions. There are mansions. We will be caught up. We will leave all the countries. They will elect themselves. They will fight themselves. There will be a lot of vacancy. ABU Senate. No more admission. Some of your lecturers will come for lecture that morning. Only to find out that CNN will carry the most shocking news ever seen in human history. This day will put it new Nigeria. Punch this nation. Massive disappearance of people. All of a sudden, it will occur to those you preach to who laughed at you. That this person said this. By the time they are saying it, we will wave this earth goodbye. I look forward to that time. It's a very good experience. Do you know what it means? That you are relieved from this body of sorrow. No thinking about all of these kinds of things. It's making some of you afraid. Because preachers have run away from it. Because they are not sure they are going to heaven. Don't talk about it. We are already going. We must talk about it. You talk about your house. You are hoping for break or strike or something so that you will run home. This world is not my own. Remember that country music. Powerful songs. Right now we dodge them. We sing all kinds of songs. I must make it. God is holding my hand and I must make it. These are the kinds of songs we write. Nothing at all that reminds us that we are leaving this realm. This is already a message. For someone, this is your, this is your word from the Lord tonight. That you should sit down and think about your life. I can stand as a preacher and deceive men. But on that day, all of a sudden, you will see bishops and pastors still in the earth. And the members will say, Pastor, he say, please don't. The Bible will once again become the bestseller. Because everybody, whether you believe in Christ or not, it will no longer be an instrument of devotion. It will be the roadmap for the next level of prophecy. Every church on earth will be jam-packed. At that point, every business will close their shop by force. 
when there is nobody you must, whether you are selling tire, whether you are an iron bender, whatever you are doing, you will pack up your business and run to church. And everybody will sit in church hoping that that is the place where the rapture will happen, whereas it has happened. All of a sudden, within 24 hours, a strange man will appear on your TV. And you say, world, calm down. It's true that some people have gone, but let there be peace. And the Bible calls him the Antichrist. Not an Antichrist. He is the Antichrist. At that point, the Bible says, men will run and beg the mountain to fall on them. You are afraid of bicycle hitting your leg. But the Bible says even death will run away. Death will say, I've tried. That's it. Mission accomplished. Yes, read your Bible. Men will run to the mountain. People will carry knives to kill themselves and will not die. The Bible says the, in Revelation, I thought we'll be able to do it this year, but we may do it. We may not be able to do it this year. Eschatology, there is a whole teaching on it. A four-part series on the end time. Hallelujah. I'm just giving you, am I boring you? <laughs> you better say no, because this cannot be boring when your eternal destiny is tied to it. <laughs> Some of us, this is a revelation. God has been talking to you. Calm down with the issue of wanting to make it and think about your eternal destiny. Hallelujah. Churches will still be full. There will still be men of God doing live telecasts, whereas the rapture has happened. Some will even be making altar calls. I mean what I'm saying, and I'm very serious about it. Yet there are some people, some quiet mothers, who have been praying, like Anna, the prophetess, looking forward to the consolation. When that happens, some of the cleaners in our churches who we have disrespected, before you know it, they will leave the rag for you there and leave. Some of the house helps we have ill-treated, they will go and leave all of us. The door of CBN will be wide open to go and pack all the money. All the security people, the banks will be there. The bulk room will be open. Go and pack. And then you will hear that there is a new technology for buying and selling. The Antichrist will introduce a new code of conduct. Joshua Selman! For where? Yes, God. And I will turn there and I'll see Lawrence. I'll say, You made it. Oh, I pray that you will turn and see your father, your mother. And you say, where is my sister? And there will be joy. No matter how antisocial you are, there must be joy. Because you will turn and see someone. And you will suddenly turn and see the person who led you to Christ but has died. And you will look at him. And we will all be young. No competition of I'm fine, you are not. We will all be fine. Leave this body with all the deficiencies that this realm brought for us. And will arise in a glorified body. Question. Will your father be there? Will your mother be there? Yes, you may be there. There are people in my life. I'm sorry to say it. I know they will not be there. Based on the truth of God's word. They died without Jesus Christ. Some of them. We had the privilege to talk to them. And they didn't take it seriously. And they died. There are people you spoke to. They didn't know that you were so close. And they didn't listen. And they died. With my mouth. Will I make it known. That's why we have to preach. From the rising of the sun. Right until it's going down. I will sing. Of the mercies of the Lord. There will be churches. That more than half of the congregation. Will be dancing and singing praise and worship. And they are not gone. Because they never took seriously. The issue of salvation. They thought it's a basic thing. 
There will even be men of God sharing revelations. And all of a sudden, they will find out that the earth looks empty. The weight of the earth will reduce because people have left. Revelation says that there was 30 minute silence in heaven. You know why? The, the shock in heaven because of the seven vials that was about to be poured upon the earth. The Bible says one third of the vegetation of the earth will be destroyed. You were taught about ecosystems, right, in biology. Imagine what happens to the earth when one third of the vegetation is destroyed. It's not a prophetic statement. It will happen. No buying Indomie until the mark of the beast is there. No nothing. No matter how you hide. We have GPS. What do they call it? GPRS. GPS. They will find you. No hiding. The question I want to ask you right now again is are you going to make it? This is not to scare you. What then is the condition to make heaven? What condition transits you from being a sinner to being a righteous person in Christ? Romans chapter 8. Sorry, chapter 10. I'll begin to read from verse 8. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Here's the condition. That if thou shalt what? Confess. Not assume. Confess. Verbalize. With your mouth. The Lordship of Jesus Christ. And if you believe it, that means it is possible to confess what you do not believe. Is that true? So, you must first believe in your heart that this is true. Jesus came and died. He shed his blood for my sins. He was given as a propitiation, as an exchange. What I could not do for myself. Jesus came as the ransom, the lamb that shed his blood for my sins. He said, if you believe in the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, what is the, the result? Thou shalt be saved. Next verse. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And then with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. Has this happened to you? I know you have spoken. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe you died. I believe you died. And you are pinching people all around. The Bible says, do you believe in your heart? Was it a sincere statement? Do you truly believe that Jesus died? Do you believe that he shed his blood? He took your place in death that you may take his place in life. Do you believe that he defeated sin? He defeated Satan? He broke the power of sin. Do you believe that he offers you new life? And if you believe it, have you acknowledged it? If you have not done that, if Jesus comes today, you are going to hellfire. Hallelujah. So before we continue, I'm going to give us five minutes. And I'd like us to pray from the depths of your heart, every one of us, and say, Lord, I commit myself. Commit myself. I want to be sure that on this day, 
this decision is true in my life. Jesus, Son of God. Pray. I believe in you. I believe in you. I call you my Messiah. Jesus, Son of God. I believe in you. Pray from the depths of your heart. I believe that Jesus died. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. Oh, I believe. I believe in life and in death. This becomes my conviction. Jesus, Son of God, I may not believe many things about the Christian faith, but I believe this one. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. With my heart, I believe that Jesus died. Jesus paid the price. I believe the truth of God's word. I believe that Jesus came. He was born of the Virgin Mary. I believe that he suffered. I believe that he went to the cross. I believe he hung on that cross for me. I believe that he was pierced with those nails for my sins. I believe he said it is finished. I believe he was buried and he went to hell and collected the keys of death, hell and the grave. I believe that on the third day he resurrected. I believe that he's alive today and he offers me the gift of righteousness. Oh, and I've received it by faith. Jesus, Son of God. important decision in your life when the road is called up yonder 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 When the road is called up yonder, when the road, when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, in two minutes. I like you to cry for your family members that you know you know they are going to hell lift your voice and pray don't pretend it some of us our kind fathers are still going to hell when all is said and done when all is said and done your degree means nothing your prosperity means nothing when all is said and done when all is said and done there are some of our sisters going to hell brothers our relatives kind cousins well-meaning family members but as it is right now the truth of god's word is that they are going to hell pray for them Lord, save them. Save them. Save them. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Whether you believe it or not, Jesus is coming.
please pray for them in one minute. I know we've taken time, but this is too important. What then are we doing? Save their soul, oh God. Save their soul. Please pray for your father. Lord, let him not go to hell. Now that he's alive, there is still a chance. Pray for your drunkard brother. Lord, you have to do something about his salvation. Pray for your idol worshipping grandparents. Lord, they are kind. They love me. But they are going to hell. Save them, oh God. Are you praying? Let me tell you, this is all we do tonight. It is important. There is nothing that stops Jesus Christ from coming this night. The gospel of the kingdom is already being preached. There is nothing that stops Jesus Christ from coming tomorrow morning. Hallelujah. The last prayer point before we continue. Listen, look at me. I want to say something and I mean it from the depths of my heart. There are some of you here, the blood of your family members and your friends will be upon your head because you move around, you know Jesus and you love him, but you are afraid and ashamed. You don't want stigmatization. How can me, a fine girl, be involved in preaching? How can me, a bobo, all right, they are going to die. That's the problem. It has nothing with you being a preacher. And let me tell you, the Bible tells us that the rich man was in hell and he saw Lazarus. They communicated. You will be able to see your father and your mother. They will look at you. You will look at your roommates. You will look at people. You will see them. Let me tell you the truth. And they are going to ask you, they will say, Femi, you saw this thing. You didn't insist. You even asked me out. Yet you never preached to me. You taught me about prosperity. You taught me. Many of us who are preachers here, the blood of many people will be upon our heads. We taught about dimensions of revival. We taught about divine health. Rema, we heal the sick. There were all kinds of demonstrations of the spirit. But they, we did not confirm whether our members are going to make it. We had building projects. Project 10,000. Excellence. There was table. You caught cake. We dressed well in suit. But the question is, in the final analysis, are you preaching to anybody? There are some of you, you have never opened your mouth to talk to anybody. You can share about revelation. You can share about marriage. You can give koinonia messages. You are on Facebook. You are on Twitter. You have all kinds of things. God gave you an opportunity. You have recharge card. Let me tell you something. In 2000, and was it 3 or 4? I used to do something. I will never sleep until I send text messages to at least 10 or 15 people talking to them about the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know them. I would just be calling numbers at random. I think that was when 2003, 4. That was when they started this GSM thing. I would just type in numbers at random and send. Just type a message about salvation. Not a condemning message, but a sincere message. There are some of you, you can make tracts. You are waiting until the day you become a Jew. Some of us, our Facebook pages have become platforms for, for gossiping and making all kinds of noise. Yet our loved ones are going to hell. You are interested in a relationship with a lady. 
You don't even know whether she's going to heaven or hell. All you know is she's fine. Continue. Hallelujah. And you are there. God gave you beauty. All kinds of guys are coming. You don't want to fall your hand. And you never talk to them about Jesus Christ. Some of you get up and you allow people. You come for coin on You just say, I'm going. And they say, okay. And it never occurs to you that if you come for coin on and the trumpet sounds, you will never see them again. You have no ministry if souls are not being saved. You are not doing ministry. I don't care what you are doing. Our number one assignment is part of our mission statement. Massive salvation of souls. Not salvation of souls. Massive salvation of souls. When I see a man that needs to hear about Jesus and God grants me the grace, I will speak. If I cannot speak, I will do something. What is wrong with you going to the studio and going to pay 10 or 20,000 naira and just do a salvation message? You are not the name of any ministry. You say, what is the name of my own ministry? Must you have a ministry? Just go to the studio and do it a 20 minutes presentation of salvation or you and your friends contribute two to two two thousand five or ten people and just put it as an mp3 we put all kinds of useless things um this is joshua selman i'm about to release my debut track nonsense when there is room to preach the gospel first how many of our gospel songs carry direct salvation messages have you seen, have you discovered the way we are quietly deviating and nobody wants to attack the salvation thing it looks old school right it doesn't look very attractive so i rather push success i'm not against success brothers and sisters but i repeat if jesus comes nobody is carrying a khaki out of this realm are you are, are you are you aware of that you are not going to carry any shirt. All of these things, you will drop it behind. Whatever you have in your account is useless. You won't carry your awards. You won't carry your degree. You won't carry your marriage certificate. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. This is what drives me every day. I have dedicated my life not just for ministry to turn the hearts of many to righteousness i don't care how much i'm misunderstood i don't care how old school i sound when jesus comes in the final analysis some of you are fellowship escorts some of you are pastors when was the last time you truly preached do you know that we graduate people from bible school and they don't know what the gospel is they know the keys to wealth. They understand marriage counseling, conflict resolution, how to raise money for church, but they know nothing about winning souls. One more time before I continue. I've, this thing has touched my heart. This thing has touched my heart because this is the core, the pivot, the pivot. Of our Christian experience. If God makes you a millionaire and nobody is getting saved as a result of your millions, you will eat your money the day the church is raptured. If God gives you a platform, you have your small fellowship, your group, and you just feel we are only five, I think everybody is born again. Don't make assumptions. That's why I respect Papa E.E. Adeboe. If he holds a meeting between him and his wife, I'm sure he will still make an altar call. No assumption. No assumption. We preach powerful messages. And at the end of it, we don't care whether people are saved or not. One more time. Put a fire in my spirit. Let my mouth not be silent. 
as far as preaching the gospel, telling people that Jesus died for them and that there is judgment if they don't pay attention. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Some of you truly, when you started out with God, you were very serious as far as soul winning is concerned. You didn't even know that there was anything called anointing. But now you know that there is anointing. I will use everything that God has given me for the gospel. Pray. Prosperity. Grace. The knowledge of graphics. My knowledge of media. My beauty. Sister, pray. Tired of taking men to hell. Now I need to begin to take men to heaven. I will use my voice to sing. And I will keep singing until people come to Jesus Christ. Many of you need to repent on behalf of your groups and ministries. Open your mouth and ask the Lord for forgiveness. You've been doing a lot of activities. But they are not channeled towards soul winning. And you don't care. Open your mouth and pray. And say, Lord, my small fellowship in the village have not been preaching the gospel. I've been preaching many things. Not the gospel of salvation. Every other gospel is only useless or useful when the gospel of salvation has been preached. Some of us have little groups that we preach to occasionally. Where did you throw your evangelism zeal? It looked old school and you've thrown it for something new. The Bible says, ask for the ancient part. Please pray. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out Light the fire again I need your discipline I'm crying out Light the fire again Don't let my love grow cold I'm crying out Light the fire again. I need your day simply. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I just feel God wants us to stop here and press on this issue tonight carnal believers and the rest we have to go we'll take on that one hallelujah whether you are going to kneel down or lie down in the next 10 minutes i'd like you to write the names of five people that were going to intercede for their salvation if this is what we do tonight go ahead and pray please cry to god they must be saved Mam braba teke lebo ko soto baladarabal. Raba teke broske de baladarabosh. The natural man. I'm crying now. Write it. There is no man that Jesus cannot save. For as long as there is life, there is hope. Shake it about a rabbit, 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 a I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it when it's all about you. Please write it down. All about you, Jesus. It's 
It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. 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 It's all about you, Jesus. In the next five minutes, I'd like you to pray in tongues like your life depends on it and say, Lord, these five people must be saved. I must see them in heaven. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Whether you want to kneel down, cry, whatever it is, let there be a cry. They must be born again. My father will not go to hell. My father will not go to hell. My mother will not go to hell. Pray. Save my husband. Save my wife. Pray. When the trumpet sounds, I must see them in heaven. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. They must be saved. They may be non Christians, but I travel. They must be saved. Yeah, 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 Revelations 20. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The Lord is imparting a genuine passion for souls. Yeah. Revelations 20. From verse 10. Revelations 20, verse 10. listen listen and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night forever next verse and I saw a great white throne I saw it I saw it and he that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was no place found for them verse 12 i don't know what gospel you have been heard you have been preaching i saw the dead small and great commissioners and house boys presidents and bike men first class students and those who did not pass jam, I saw them. I saw them. They stood before God. Every man must stand before God. 
and the books were open what books your faithfulness in evangelism your giving for those who have taught you that your works of righteousness are not important here goes the bible the works of men will be tried by fire and another book was opened which is the book of life brothers and sisters read the remaining part by yourself one to read and the dead were judged out of that means there are things that are written according to what next verse and the sea gave up all the people who died by sea crash and death and hell delivered all our uncles and aunties and politicians it says and they were judged every man according to their works 14 and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire and the bible says this is the second death let me show you something is there another verse go ahead verse 15 everyone read and hold on and what whosoever at that point your status will not matter again at that point your english your ordination will not matter your suit will not bail you out he said whosoever was not found written in the book of life there was no story end of discussion cast into the lake of fire whether it is your father whether it is your mother some of you if you don't pray you will watch your mother who gave birth to you you will watch her as the bible says depart from me and you will watch them cry to hell some of you will watch your uncles lift your voice and cry and say lord whatever it will take to stop them from going to this place of torment i cry tonight i love them too much i love my mother i love my father i love my brothers yeah. whosoever's name was not found in the book of life be it a president be it a governor whether you are a first class student two one student it will not matter again it won't matter how many parishes you have it won't matter how many rema you have hey, 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 hey. whether you are a member of koinonia or not is irrelevant i will stand for myself you will stand for yourself and I saw books open and another book was open yeah. 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 intercede for them lord send angels send angels to my house send angels give them dreams give them encounters with jesus in their dreams they must be born again yeah. Yeah.
said and done when all is said and done this is all that will matter yeah. Yeah, yeah, Revelations 21 Verse 3 a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God verse 4 and God finally brothers and sisters a day will come when all is said and done in this life God will wipe away the tears the tears of mockery some people died out of cancer some died out of hiv some were martyred they were standing for jesus while they were killed the bible says on that day that tears the tears of mockery holy holy the lord will wipe that tears the tears of the pain that you have to go through on account of the gospel that men will not like you some of you would have been married since if you were not standing for God. But because of your faith, the Bible says God will wipe that tears and there shall be no more death, no more obituary, no more pain, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Listen. Listen. It's not enough that you are convinced that you will make heaven. I'm still saying it. We are going to pray. There are some of our loved ones, some of us come from backgrounds that are non-Christians. And some of our loved ones are still there. You are going to pray. And everyone will pray too. Give them divine visitations. Encounters with Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, if Jesus came to die, an encounter is not too much. To force any man to give his life to Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Encounters. Appear to them in visions. Like Saul on his way to Damascus. Lord, they will not die. Give them encounters. Give them encounters. Give them encounters. Rakata pakata patosh. Pray, change my father, change my mother. Some of them vowed that they will never give their hearts to the Lord. I like you to pray, it can change. Some of them are traditional worshippers. Take a tepokotoba. 
Mention them by name. Mention them by name. Read your prayer request. Mention them by name. Mention them by name. Claim their salvation in the name of Jesus. Some of them are religious people. The truth is they are not born again. They are not born again. Some of them belong to sects that will take them to hell. Occultic sects. Pray for them. Give them an encounter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll never forget one of our sisters. She was a member of the worship team. Hallelujah. I will never forget her touching testimony. Came from a completely non-Christian background. And she decided to give her life to Christ. When she gave her life to Christ, it was war. And gradually, gradually, the Lord started doing his thing in the family. The brother gave his life to Christ. And then I think the mother, and it was remaining the father. And this lady would not give up. I will never forget that night. When she called me crying and jumping around chapel. And said, can you imagine? My father, my father gave his life to Christ. She was jumping. See? There are some hardened people you see. You know that humanly speaking, they will never be born again. Don't try the power of the Holy Spirit. Think of how you were. Some of you think of what God brought you out of. Then you will know that there is no man that God cannot change. There is no man. God has changed occultists. God has changed hardened criminals. Some of you, you know where God brought you out from. If God could change you, if God could change you, we are still going to pray. You are going to say, Lord, put your word in my mouth. Because some of you, it's just, you don't know what to say. But we are going to cry. Lord, let no one's blood be upon my head on that day. Put your word in my mouth. And grant me the boldness to declare the gospel. Go ahead and pray. your word in my mouth pray deliver me from shame deliver me from my ego deliver me from embarrassment hey 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 are you praying from the depths of your heart? You must start with your family members before you think of crusades and outreaches. Start with your family members. They must be born again. They must be born again. Rabata gada bala da bos, shop brado gado bala da bos. Rabata kapre da gede bala da bos. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. There are many avenues, many avenues to turn the hearts of men to righteousness. Number one. The ministry of intercession there are some of you who pray a lot but all you are praying is oh god give me tea god give me bread add blue ban on the bread that's that's all our prayer if if listen 
if the scope of your Christian experience, there's, we'll do it another day. I really wanted to talk about the carnal man. And then we'll, there, there are scriptures that I prepare to touch. We can't, we can't do that. Our time is already gone. The slave to the flesh. That is the man of the flesh that can really not please God. That is another dimension. Maybe we'll consider that next week. Hallelujah. That you, you, you write the names of people and you're just going to fasting for one day and it's not for yourself. How many of you have ever done that? To fast and it's not for yourself. If it's not for me, that's the flesh. That's the flesh. If it's not for my marriage, my, my lifting, my prosperity, that you go to prayer and say Lord you must save these souls and you are not just pretending it one thing that I know is that as much as God grants me grace and breath no one's blood will be upon my head that day no one will look at me and say Joshua Selman you had access to me but you never spoke to me about Jesus do you know listen do you know what the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees said, they said, let his blood be on our head. Who taught them that principle? That the blood of a man can be upon the head of another. And that God would look and say, Ken, I gave you access. I gave you graces. And you ended up building an empire. MOG. They invited you to travel around the world. They gave you water, ushers around, and you never, you were not concerned about the souls of men. There are men who will carry the blood of others on their head. Hallelujah. Oh, I must preach. Necessity is laid upon me. Some of us, the only reason why we cannot, I'm not talking of condemning people, but I'm talking of being passionate enough to trust God. Tell them what Jesus did in your life. There are some of you, you have never invited anybody to church, not once, the way you are like this. You don't care. It's not an issue at all. Yet we sing and we say, Lord, I love you. Yet we sing and we say, someday I'm going home. The Lord is speaking to us tonight. The Bible says the harvest is wide. But the laborers are few. He said, pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers. When Jesus came, he gave his assignment a business-like attitude. He said, I must walk the walk of him that sent me. Hallelujah. We just came back from a trip. And when I came, I couldn't even rest just to do everything and to come here now. Why all of this thing? Our flight was delayed. There were so many things. These guys have been tired. We left Benin Republic this morning by 5 a.m. in the morning. Headed to the airport. Our flight was shifted. And I can justify and say, Kite, God, you too, you know. But Paul said the love. He said, I, Paul, a bond servant. It looks like I'm in slavery, but no one is forcing me. There is love that constrains me. Little inconveniences for some of us. Little inconveniences for the kingdom. And we complain. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not against comfort. But I'm telling you, if it is because you want to be comfortable that you allow souls to die and you don't make spiritual progress, their blood will be on your head. Tomorrow morning, we're up teaching school of ministry students from there. We're headed to Zamfara. Coming back Monday morning straight into the counseling session. Why am I doing all this? Am I stupid or I don't know where a retreat center is? That I can just go and lie down and say, let me rest. What drives you, my brothers and my sisters? Please don't say you are a ministry. No. No. What is it that when you get up in the morning, 
Truly, please take seriously what I'm saying. What drives you? What drives you? Power or fame? What drives your Christian experience? There are some of you, those around you, it's not like they are hardened. Nobody has preached to them. They've been coming to church. You know they are not born again. You know they are not born again. Religion is not being born again. If they are not saved, they are not saved. Period. It's time to talk to them. And tell them, I, I want to talk to you. Is it too much to pay and invite them to a restaurant and talk to them about Jesus Christ? Can your 500 naira not go for the gospel? Will it kill you? Will it kill you? What is wrong with three or four of you coming and just praying for three days? Just praying and fasting. No group, no ministry, no nothing. Just to pray for souls genuinely. Ask people to submit the names of their unsaved ones and pray. After three days, that's all. Jesus said, if you do this to the least of my brethren. See, let me tell you, the day Jesus comes, we are going to be surprised. Because those you think are the greatest in the kingdom, you will be shocked to find out that they are not the greatest. Some of us, the men of God that you think will be the greatest, you will be surprised that some of us will have just barely made heaven. Whereas there are people whose entire life, they don't have revelation, they don't have any rema, nobody's inviting them for any ministration, but their heart in life and in death has been committed towards the gospel. There are classmates of ours that have never heard about Jesus Christ. We are ashamed. Sometimes when I pass through ABU campus, I look at the campus and I nod my head. Things have changed. Things have changed. The fire. Many of us are afraid to talk to people about Jesus. Okay, agree that you cannot go for all the crusades and the rest. What of your family members? You grew up knowing your father drinking and smoking and bowing to a God. Have you ever said, Daddy, there's something I want to discuss with you. Say, my father that I know, as if you don't know the Holy Spirit too. What if I talk to him and he insults me? Is that the reason why you will not talk? What if I talk to him and he stops giving me uh, pocket money? What if I tell the brother that this relationship is not born again and let me talk to him about Jesus Christ. Won't it cost me the relationship? I want to marry. Okay. Marry. There are some of us as you are looking at me right now. Even those you are in a relationship with are unbelievers. They are going to hell. You don't care. Who is he? He's a nice guy. Is he born again? And please, everybody is a sinner. If he's a sinner, he's a sinner. Your priority is not love. Your priority is salvation. Please hear what I'm saying. Because on that day, the Lord is going to ask you. Praise the Lord. One last prayer point. Lord, whatever I can do at this level to contribute to the advancement of the kingdom and soul winning, reveal it to me. Whatever I can do, if you can't preach, you can sow seeds. Please pray. Everybody must do something. What can I do for my family? Do I need to organize a get together? Do I need to celebrate my father's birthday for him so that he will be saved? What can I do at this level? Do I need to buy a card? Do I need to write an article for my family members? Do I need to produce tract? What can I do? At this level, don't say I cannot do anything. With the grace you have, there's something you can do. Please pray. Lord, you gave me a voice. I can sing with it. You gave me wisdom. I can use that as a platform. Lord, you bless me with finances. 
I can release my wealth for the kingdom. Lord, you gave me a car. My car can be used for the kingdom. You gave me a barbing saloon. It can be used for the kingdom. You gave me a restaurant. It can be used for the kingdom. Rakata Pratekere Balanamos Reveal to me what I can do at this level it may not be much but let me contribute there's something i can do i can pray i can preach i can finance the kingdom Hallelujah. Listen to me. I can go on my knees and beg you. Don't make this just an emotional thing. It's easy to just feel emotional and just say, wow, because I spoke about hellfire and rapture and books. It's easy for you to be threatened and then just carry the euphoria for one or two days and it dies back. Take this as a message God is giving you. No matter what you have done in ministry, if souls are not being saved, you are wasting God's time. Hallelujah. Please rise up and lift. If you wrote your prayer, your request, if it's in a book, just lift it up. I want to pray on it. Listen. You are the first agent that will follow up these people. Don't just pray for an anonymous man of God to evolve from anywhere. You are the man of God that God is authorizing tonight to start. Don't fear their faces. I'm not saying you should go and do stupid things without zeal. Or with zeal and without knowledge. Just jump into people's houses and inconvenience them. Start with your family members. Your family members will not kill you. At least you can start from there. Father, we repent in any way we have trivialized the issue of soul winning. And Lord, we know that this is in your heart and you decided to move us this direction. We want your heartbeat to become our heartbeat. We want your cry to become our cry. We want your passion to become our passion. Put a piece of your desire for souls in our hearts and let it be a fire that nothing in this life can quench. Oh, we desire you. We desire you. Put that passion lord i stretch my hands towards these names there are so many people who are going to hell whose names are written some of them are fathers some are mothers lord in the name of jesus we agree as a family of faith that beginning from tonight let there be strange angelic visitations strange angelic visitation Force them to go for crusades. May they go for meetings. May they encounter men and women of God. And Lord, we pray, especially for those who are not of the Christian faith. Lord, you know that humanly speaking, their minds are made up. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray 
angelic visitations encounters of Jesus Christ as they sleep they will see his face as they sleep they will see his face in the name of Jesus Christ as they sleep they will see the cross they will see the cross it will follow them everywhere they go we ransom their souls from the pit of hell Lord we will not stand in heaven and watch our loved ones enter that wide gate of hell we will stand and we will rejoice put a passion in us to win souls let it not just be a religious evangelical thing Lord remind us that if we do not win these souls and we let them die that their blood will be upon our heads I pray for everyone I kill timidity from your life whatever makes you ashamed of the gospel I don't care what it is whether your inability to communicate well your poor background complex that you have about yourself that 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 limitation is swallowed up tonight in the name of Jesus may my God give you utterance may my God give you utterance may my God give you confidence in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray that you will not win souls and miss heaven yourself I pray for everyone that the same way we are gathered in the earth like this that is how we will see ourselves on that day we will see ourselves and know ourselves therefore I pray any manner of life represented here listen to me any manner of life that the devil is deceiving anyone into and making it look like it does not matter tonight that power of sin is broken over your life every association every wrong thing that can jeopardize your eternal destiny in the name of Jesus Christ receive grace to say no to every appearance of evil receive no to receive grace to say no to wicked and ungodly relationships receive grace to cut away from people who do not love God nor value his ways in the name of Jesus Christ and where you need to stand alone receive courage to stand alone where they mock you and say all kinds of things I release grace for you to still stand. I pray for you from the depths of my heart that every weight, every habit, every attitude you know that can destroy your Christian experience and rob you of the opportunity. I don't care what it is and how long it has been. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that that life of pretense dies tonight. And I pray for those of you who have been doing things both great and small for the kingdom. Grace to continue. I pray specifically for all the workers in this house. I want you to know that your contributions to advancing the kingdom the worship department the ushers one day you will see this record in heaven and the lord will say this is what you did on earth for my kingdom and for those of us who are not serious with the house of god not the things of god we are just careless there is no kind of commitment that you have you don't give for in the house of god you don't pray you don't support the cause of the kingdom I pray tonight that God will speak to you and that for the first time for some of us you will say enough of lukewarm Christianity it's time to plunge in and commit myself truly in the name of Jesus Christ for some of you who have been wounded on account of the gospel you have been misunderstood on account of the gospel 
I pray for you there is a bomb in Gilead. There are some of us who have been persecuted because of the gospel. You have been blackmailed because of your Christian integrity. I speak to you, do not give up. A day of reward is coming. There is one who is called the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You are suffering financially today. If only you compromise on your Christian integrity, that man would have given you money. Now the money is not there, but he's telling on you. I want you to know that the Lord is proud of you. He is watching. A day of reward and recompense is coming. It's coming. It's coming. Beauty that makes this whole lot adore you. Home spent with you. We'll just sing this song once. Here I am to Here I am to buy One more time. Here I am. for you tonight is to live with eternity in view whatever you need to do to remind yourself I want you to remind yourself life does not end here life does, I want this is the message to you the personal word of the Lord to you that there is more live your life knowing that you will give account of it don't live your life as if you own your, yourself. Live your life as you joke, as you play, huh? as you go around your normal activity. Remind yourself that a day is coming when all that we see today will be no more. Let it not scare you, but it serves as a buffer solution. It will check balance excesses in your life and it will keep you hot for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for tonight. You took us in a way and a dimension that we did not even expect. The Lord, we thank you because this has produced fire in us. I truly believe that from this message, habits and all kinds of things have died a natural death. You will walk back and find out that the things you could not resist, all of a sudden, there is grace for you. A revelation has imparted grace. All of a sudden, things you could not say no to, you will find out that you can look it at the face and now say no. Some of us, many of us, was one of the things that I wanted to talk about. The rate at which pornography and masturbation. Just give me a minute. Let me talk about these two things. I know that I, we're out of time. The rate at... No, no, no. Keep standing. We're rounding up already. The rate at which these things are eating up believers. We'll talk on that when we talk on the canal. Not exactly on these things. But I just feel in my personal experience as I talk with people I found out that these things are about the biggest demons 
they are, they are eating up pastors, reverends, apostles, teachers, prophets, well-meaning Christians. There are probably many of us here right now, you are looking at me. It's not like you are bad people. It's not like you don't love God. I don't know how that spirit just came upon the body of Christ. It must be attacked back to hell. Masturbation and pornography, these two things, they go hand in hand. Believe me, you come into a congregation and you'll be surprised at least 60 to 65% of that congregation. And it's not, I know I've counseled married men and women who are still involved in pornography and masturbation. You would be thinking marriage will solve the problem, but it didn't solve it. That to tell you it's a spirit. <laughs> Listen, I said it when I was teaching the school of ministry students. We are here to help you. Don't go to hell for nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are some of you, the devil has deceived you. If you open up with people, you, you really think your situation is the first? I've had men of God, pastors, some colleagues in ministry come to me to say, look, you've got to help me. And for you, if people come to you, it's not an, a situation to start running and say, can you imagine? Even so, so, so person came and met me. And I also want to advise you, be careful who you meet for counsel. Huh? So that you don't just take yourself innocently and say, I'm suffering from pornography or masturbation. And the man of God says, ah, this is what I've been waiting for. And then he now takes the advantage. I've spoken with a lot of ladies who have gone to meet men of God, telling them, look, I'm suffering with lust. I can't see men and resist them. And then at the end of the discussion, in the final analysis, the man is adding, adding to the iniquity again. If you're a man of God here, listen to me, and members come to you for counseling, and you end up sleeping with them or doing anything, stop it. You are going to hell. If you, the Bible says, he that causes every one of these to fall. Masturbation and pornography, two devils. We are going to pray just in one minute. Is that alright if we pray? Please. I'd like you to challenge. You see, the truth is, we are all scattered here. But everyone were the ones who know. I'm not condemning you. It is the truth. Many of us have quoted everything. We have fasted. We have prayed. People come to me and they cry and they tell me, man of God, it was even in the period of fasting. I was fasting three days in the period of the fasting. It's because you need help. Hallelujah. We're going to lift our voice. We're going to say, Lord, we banish this spirit first from our lives and from koinonia and from the body of Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Take it seriously. We curse this spirit to devils that are destroying the body of Christ. Destroying pastors. Destroying men of God. Pray! Pray! We cause the spirit of pornography. We challenge it. We challenge it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We declare that we are the sanctified. We are holy. Kept. Set apart. We are the vessels in that great house. That are unto honor. Pray, I challenge that spirit of masturbation, of pornography. You are a devil from the pit of hell. You will not steal away the destiny of the church. Pray for yourself. Pray for this great house. Pray for the body of Christ. We break the power in the name of Jesus. We break the power. We break the power of sin. We break the power of iniquity. We break the power. 
Alléluia. Alléluia. Listen. Let me say this. If you like, say that I'm doing whatever. You have all kinds of junk pictures or, or whatever it is on your phone. All of these seductive images. Go and delete it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Delete it. Break all of those VCDs into pieces. Match them by yourself and kick them out. If you want to see the glory of God in your life, authentic glory, there is a price. Don't let anybody fool you. There is a price. I've touched a very sensitive issue in the body of Christ. Many of you will go back and think about it. Preachers are very afraid of talking about this because many of them, sorry to say it, are victims of it. And I do not condemn it. But it's a strategy. That's why the devil attacks men of God. So that if as a man of God, I'm involved in pornography and masturbation, do you think I will have the courage to talk about it? What if I am caught? Don't condemn people. There are people who will come and open up to you. It's not a thing of condemnation. You condemn anybody, God will judge you. No man has made you a judge over another. But let me tell you, you can sit down the way you are and allow yourself to keep dying in silence. Do you know for some of us here, probably, this is the one weight that if we can overcome, we will step into certain realms of glory. You have tried. Probably God has told you, go and meet a man of God. But you've not had the courage. Tonight, God is talking about you to remind you that I've been talking to you about it because I love you. Hallelujah. Tonight you are worshipping with us for the first time. We are out of time. While we prepare to hear the announcement, please sit down. If you are worshipping with us for the first time, this is your first time worshipping with us here at Koinonia. We honor you and we love you. What a night to be here. Please, I'd like you to stand up and make your way to the front here. Stand up and make your way. God bless you. Thank you, sirs. Thank you, ma'am. Wherever you are, inside or outside, find your way here. We have a blessing and a prophecy for you. God bless you. The Lord brought you here to change your life. You will never be the same. We honor you. Koinonia, celebrate them. Jesus brought them here to bless them. For those of you who invited them, may the Lord bless you. The oil upon your life will never run dry. coming god bless you there are still people coming from inside and outside hallelujah thank you so much for coming god bless every one of you this is koinonia hallelujah a meeting put together by eternity network international hallelujah and um, i thank you so much for coming listen i assure you your life will never be the same. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.